Hello. How's everybody doing? It is now nighttime, and you know what that means? It's time for some scary stories. Well, not really scary stories, rotten mango stories. We're back with another rotten mango video. I came with food. I got shin ramen and a chicken and red onion cold cut sandwich. This, this looks nasty. I'm not going to lie, but we're not really worried about that right now. We have the real life parasite. Hey, bro. Mm, I don't even know what to say for real. This video is called The Real Life Parasite is the Latest Serial Killer in South Korea. Bro, the thing is, I don't understand how people can actually be serial killers. Like, do you know how crazy... Like, that's actually crazy. The amount of... St like, the amount of brain power you have to go through and energy to, like, kill people and then get away with, like... I mean, that's probably... Never mind. Now, I'm, this is the brain of somebody who's semi-normal. So there's that. But, uh, I don't know. I got my food... I got my rotten mango, and I got my juice and water, so y'all buckle up. Let's get, to, let's, get to, let's get to watching this scary story. Have you ever wanted to watch more videos than the thousands of ones that are already on my channel? Hell yeah. How'd I do that? Huh? Tell me. You know, like the ones that I can't show on YouTube? Uh, I, I got you. I have a Patreon with three tiers. This is what you will get per tier. Most of you like to read it. Honestly, I love it. We be going crazy on the Patreon, but I'm going to let you be the judge of that. So y'all go ahead and check out the Patreon and let me know what you think. Thank you all for watching. Thank you all for supporting. And thank you for everything. Now, let's get back to the video. Bada -bing, bada -bing. This is a really creepy story. And oh it's God. just unfolding in South Korea right now. And it's all kind of revolving around a pair of shoes. There what? were a pair of women's shoes that seem to be pretty hard to get. Uh -huh. It's not like they're limited or super popular, but only 12 boutiques in all of South Korea sold this particular woman's shoe. Okay. Maybe this was even like a selling point for the buyers. Maybe they felt like they were all in this exclusive club because only 12 boutiques sell this shoe, right? Mm -hmm. It seemed like a good purchase. Until every single one of those women, they get a phone call from the police regarding those very shoes. And it was strange. The police called and asked, oh, hi, is this so-and-so? Did you buy the shoes at this blank boutique? The women are like, yeah, uh, how did you know where I bought it? And I'm sorry, why are the police calling about a pair of heels? Like, am I in trouble right now? The police told the woman, no, you're not in trouble. Mm -hmm. We're just investigating a case and we need to make sure that you're alive and well. What? Okay, that is so strange. Hey, I'm gonna be honest. <clears throat> the police call me talking about some shoes. I'm giving those shoes up. Boy, I ain't finna get found nut. No, 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 no. These same women would later turn on the news and find out that the police were investigating a serial killer, and that killer had a pair of these exact shoes in his apartment, and the police suspected it belonged to a victim. The police also found a dead body shoved and locked into his apartment closet. Oh, God. Most of the women who owned these shoes, they probably had no direct connection with this alleged serial killer. They probably had never even crossed paths. But something about that, I don't know. It's just so freaky. Like, a lot of people have been talking about this in South Korea because it would freak me out, too. I, I don't know if I could ever even wear those same shoes ever again. I'm going to be honest. Even though serial killing is wrong... I feel like if you were a serial killer of women and children, you a hoe. You a hoe-ass nigga for real. You know what I'm saying? Because it's like, dog, come on, bro. Why? Why? Why Why are you killing women and children, bro? Like, why? You a hoe. That's some hoe shit to me. If you going to serial kill, kill niggas. Kill men. You know? Not me, though. Could you? Let's talk about South Korea's newest alleged serial killer. He mm. was just arrested uh, Christmas Day of last year. So a few months ago. This is oh, they got currently ass. unfolding as we speak. They got it's ass. such okay. a very recent case. And the killer, the alleged serial killer, it's just bizarre. It's not even the fact that this is South Korea's newest serial killer case in the past 20 years. I don't think that they have arrested a serial killer since 2004. So that's part wow. of it. But the case itself is so bizarre. Let's go. A 
Rotten Mango. The real life parasite. Full show notes are available at rottenmangopodcast.com. But um, let's get into it. Like I said, it's unfolding as we speak, so there's going to be updates. Let me know if you guys want me to cover those, but I'm just going to walk you through the case in the order of how the case unfolded in Korea. Okay. And it all starts with cats. Yeah, yep. I know. Okay, mm-hmm. every serial killer story seems to come back to freaking cats, but this one's a little bit different. The story doesn't start with a guy who's in his teenage years torturing and skinning cats. Although if news comes out that he did do this, I wouldn't be too surprised. Uh-uh. But the story starts with the alleged serial killer... Lee Ki Young. So in Korean, Lee Ki Young, there's actually a Korean actor by that same name. So that was a whole thing when he was. Oh, arrested. shit. But um, we're going to call him Lee. Lee. Lee's girlfriend is trying to feed Lee's cats. Uh-huh. We're going to call her Tara. So okay. she's chosen to remain anonymous in the media. There's a bunch of pseudonyms out there for her, but Tara it is. December 25th, 2022. Christmas. Bro, Christmas day. is crazy. It was really cold in Korea this Christmas day. I think it had a low of 14 degrees. Let me have my. Headphone on on one side just in case somebody not try to serial kill my ass. I'm getting paranoid. It's Fahrenheit, so very cold. I think everyone was just trying to get into that Christmas spirit regardless. Tara had just moved in with this boyfriend. Aww. Like, just moved into his apartment. Aww. And it's in the greater Seoul area in a place called Pagul. And for her at least, for Tara at least... This Christmas was a good Christmas. It was going to be one of the better Christmases. Mm -hmm. She probably had reservations about moving in so quickly with the guy that she's been dating for, what, three, four months. So technically, in Korean standards, they're moving really, really fast. Oh, God. But Lee Ki-young is responsible. He's 31 years old. He was also kind of a catch. He had his life together, which... By the way, he's kind of a catch. <laughs> Wait, he comes from a wealthy family, so I don't know how much Tara could attribute his financial stability as hard work, but still, it doesn't hurt. It's something, right? Hey, if you right? got it, you got it. Listen, and from- listen, if you got it, you got it, all right? It's expensive as hell to be out here. I ain't about to be on nobody's case. I ain't about to be on nobody's top. If you got that cash, however you got it, you got it, all right? God damn. From Tara's perspective, he's conventionally very attractive okay. to the point where when this case breaks, he will be dubbed the K-pop killer. What? What? Why? Yeah. He look- well, I got, a, I, got a, I got a title for this shit. The K-pop killer. Oh, my Lord. The story of the K-pop killer. Oh, God. Mm. Let's keep going. Looks like a K-pop star. Yeah. He yeah. Looks really? It's really, really weird. He okay, so he he's going to be dubbed the K-pop right. killer. But from Tara's perspective, he's conventionally attractive, and he just wants to settle down. That's what he keeps telling he her. Nice. I just want to meet a nice girl and settle he's down. still a hoe. Fuck that So the stability in the relationship was comforting, maybe even refreshing, right? Mm-hmm. He treated her really well, just showering her with gifts, taking her out to see the city, staying at these fancy hotels. He spoiled her. So all of that is to say... They're moving really fast, but he was a good pick. None of her family members, none of her friends were like, whoa, 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 this guy is weird. You need to watch out. Like, this guy's moving too quick. Red flag. Mm. They all thought that he was a really good person. So anyway, Mm -hmm. she's home alone in her new place, her boyfriend's apartment that she just moved into. So she's probably unpacking and organizing, and she realizes, oh, my freaking God, the freaking cats. Okay, so Lee has three cats and a dog. And she's like, I... I got to feed these cats. Uh So she heads over to the kitchen and she opens a cupboard, a little cabinet. No cat food. Another one. No cat food. She's like, where does he keep this cat food? Why is it nowhere in the kitchen? That's weird. She heads to the pantry area. No freaking cat food. I mean, does this cat eat human food? So she's thinking, what the hell? What are these cats even eating? She starts looking everywhere in the apartment for the damn cat food. And she's like, okay, I got to think like a man. Where would I put the cat food? The fuck you mean thinking like, oh, under the hallway. Under, under a little the- corridor type of area in his apartment where it seems like he just puts a lot of storage. That makes sense if he had put the cat food there, right? No. So she spots this closet at the far end of the hallway and she starts walking closer. Uh-huh. She's like, okay, maybe he put the cat food in the closet from the get-go. This closet is a horror movie level closet. What? It's one of those wardrobes and it has two doors. And the door handles are tied together with rope. Huh? Mm. That's not normal. I don't remember the last time I've been to a house that did that. Now, who, who got I don't rope know in the house? Open the closet doors. Maybe she thought he tied it up with rope because the cats are crafty and they were able to constantly find a way into their food. Yeah, they can open that the door. That was something I was thinking. Or I don't know. Maybe as a girlfriend, I'd be like, "What is this man hiding? Is there some other girl's stuff in here? Ooh. I want to know." And I'm sure the thought of calling him and asking him, like, "Hey, babe, where's the cat food?" I'm sure it crossed her mind. 
But she was like, you know what? Why don't I just open this closet? Oh. So she manages to undo all the rope, uh -huh. swings open the doors. Uh-huh. And it's literally, I don't know how to describe it, but just straight out of one of those Reddit no sleep stories. What? She nearly falls over backwards from shock. And honestly, from the, the fuck is in it? She couldn't oh. even think or move. She was terrified. What's there in, in the closet was the decomposing corpse of a oh, fuck. in the closet of her boyfriend's apartment that she had. Oh, well, well, you killed a guy. So I guess I take away that. Bitch ass nigga statement, but you still a hoe. Fuck you. Why you have that in your house with your girlfriend living in there? What is wrong with you? Just moved into was a dead body. Oh, I'm not sure if she knew when Yi Gi Young was coming home or what. Because I imagine after opening there. those closet doors, I'd be so terrified of him coming home and catching me just staring into this closet. Nigga, nigga, wield a knife and get to. <laughs> Like, finding out that I knew his secret. Like, I don't know what he would have done. Oh, Tara no. does respond very quickly. She was frozen in fear for maybe a few seconds. Well, call the she said it felt like eternity. But she snapped out of it, runs straight to the couch, dives for her phone, and calls 112, the Korean emergency line. Okay. The operator picks up, and the first words out of her mouth, as she remains very calm, she says, there's a body in my boyfriend's closet. The police soon arrive at the scene, and this is how the case of South Korea's most recent serial killers was blown Wide open. Oh, well, shit. alleged serial killer. But you'll see where I'm going. Alleged? The police arrive at the scene. And the first step, other than detaining Yi gi -young, is to identify the man in the closet. The dead body. At this point, they don't know yet that Yi gi -young is a serial killer. Mm -hmm. They just know that he most likely killed someone because there's a dead body in his hallway closet. And the body was very quickly identified to be that of Mr. T. So Mr. his real T. name is not available for the public and has been redacted from documents for privacy reasons. Thank God. But Mr. T, because what we do know about the guy, is that he was a taxi driver. So Mr. T, he lived in a neighboring city and he was in his 60s. Oh, what the fuck? Yeah. Well, no, nah, so, no, nah, fuck this nigga then. God damn. When I say a, a man, I mean somebody who's who's like 20 to 45. No, 25 to 45. That's what I meant. I hope y'all, I'm, I'm just going to let you know, I'm I'm very silly today. I, I don't want to take away from um the dead people, you know. My condolences to the people who have, who have been killed. It, it Originally, it's weird to draw the connection. Like, it doesn't even seem like the same circle of friends. Why is the 60-year-old in this 31-year-old's closet? It's yeah. not his dad. It's not a family member. What's going on? He was reported, Mr. T was reported missing just a few hours ago, Christmas morning. What? Hmm? Mr. T's son walked into the police station and begged them to find his father. The police were a little bit hesitant about this case, this missing persons case, because, because why not? sure, Mr. T hadn't come home in five days and the family was going crazy looking for him, but he was still texting the family back. Huh? Wow, okay. And the son is trying to tell the police, that's not my dad texting us. Like, trust me, I oh. know the way that my dad texts. That's not my dad. Oh. It seems to be concluded by the media that since Mr. T went missing and maybe the stage of decomposition matched, Mr. T was probably killed five days ago mm. on December 20th. Mm. They asked Tara, what was Yi Young, your boyfriend, doing on December 20th? And how has he been acting for the past few days? Tara's like, December 20th? Are you sure? My boyfriend went out to dinner with me and my parents that night on December 20th. Excuse me. It was me. a good dinner. I was really happy about the dinner. Um, Lee proved to be very charming with my parents. They really liked him. They believed he was the right guy for me and he was the type that would take care of me. Wait, I'm sorry. You said he killed someone on December 20th? That doesn't make sense. Oh. She was also asked about his behavior the past few days and she said, no, absolutely nothing about his behavior since that night seemed abnormal in any way. In fact, he was probably more upbeat than usual because Christmas was just right around the corner. Uh -huh. I don't know if this was automatically chilling for Tara, but for the police it was. Because if someone kills another human being and for the next five days they feel comfortable moving their girlfriend in into the apartment where they have a corpse rotting in the closet, yeah. they feel comfortable enough to leave her alone at said apartment yeah. to explore and potentially discover that said corpse. But also, this person is showing zero signs of distress or panic after committing a murder. Yeah. Oh, fuck. That doesn't sound like a first-time murder, even for a developing serial killer. Ah, uh, exactly. that is true. Meaning there's probably more victims, right? Yeah. So the police rush to track down Yi gi -young and they detain him. And what's really frustrating about this case is that starting now, it feels like Yi gi -young is just toying with the police. He starts dropping little Easter eggs for the police to pick up on. And some of the Easter eggs are real evidence. So when I kind of feel like, I'm going to be honest, I feel like when serial killers be doing that, I feel like they want to get caught. You know what I'm saying? 
I, I feel like I really feel like they they want to get caught because you could be just too bored. Like you be you probably get like a ego trip. Talking about like I could kill anybody. I want to see if I can get caught. Let me just leave these Easter eggs and stuff like that. Like I, I like it, it seems like that's like a like a reoccurring thing with these serial killers. Like they get too full of themselves. And, oh, you ain't gonna catch me, ho. Here, look at this, and then boom, like you get caught. I feel like they want to get caught. I don't know. When he was detained, he was just here, take me. Oh yeah, so calm. You got me. He wasn't me. even like, I didn't do it. He was just like, okay, let me go in. Okay. Oh, he sits down. He's like, yeah, okay, so let's talk about it. You're talking about the taxi driver, right? Some of the Easter eggs he's dropping, they're evidence. Some are nothing. Some are just straight up eggshells. Like he's sending them on wild goose chases starting now, so it's just going to be very infuriating. And it feels like the police have to peel back the layers of this rotten onion, just layer by layer. Rotten and mango. Try to figure out who the hell this guy is? Nobody knows who this guy is. And it's weird because imagine you're sitting in front of someone. You have their documents. You have their ID. You have everything. But not a single person that you talk to actually knows who this guy is. What? Like, who the hell is this guy? Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. it, it's really creepy. Lee was incredibly calm when he was brought in. The investigators tried all sorts of tactics with him, but he just didn't even break a sweat. Oh, he geez. told them bluntly, the taxi driver? Yeah, he killed him. I did, but I didn't want to kill him. It was a spur of the moment decision, a crime of passion, if you will. I was just very angry. He went on to tell them what happened the night of December 20th. So the night that he went out to meet Tara and her family during dinner, and some of his story was confirmed by CCTV from the restaurant and the street cameras. There's a lot of CCTV in Korea, Ooh. but other parts were clearly lies. We'll get into that later. Lee said that he went out to dinner with Tara's family and he started drinking soju. That's like a thing. You got to make a good impression. So he's drinking shot after shot. And you can see that on CCTV. Like he's just chugging these drinks. Uh -huh. He took multiple shots of soju, getting drunk. Tara's parents still really like the guy. So I guess he's not acting super intoxicated. But the problem was the dinner ends at around 11 p.m. And now Lee has to drive a few towns over to get back home to Pagul. CCTV catches Lee saying bye to Tara and her family and start making his way to his parked car. Uh -huh. If you listen to the last episode, there was a service in South Korea called Tedunjan. It's Tedunjan. very common and it's rather affordable. It's like getting a regular Uber where you call a driver to drive your car home for you. Oh, and that's, you ride that's, as a passenger. So that the next morning when you wake up hungover, your car is in the parking lot. Where does that, where does that person get their ride home from? They just walk home? Like what? For some reason, Lee did not want to do that. Huh? He wanted to drive all the way home, which is even stupider when you find out the fact that Lee wasn't supposed to be driving in the first place, sober or not. It's illegal. Lee had already received two DUI charges in the oh, past. And on December 20th of 2022, his license was actively suspended. So he wasn't supposed to be driving at all, sober uh, or not. <clears throat> but I mean, this guy is a killer or a suspected serial killer. I mean, they've never really been adverse to taking risks, right? So he gets into the car. He starts driving home. He could barely see the road. That's how drunk he is. He is recklessly Ooh. driving. And at one point on the trek home, he approaches a red light. Now, this particular intersection, he's trying to make a right turn, but it's illegal to make a right turn at a red light. It's one of those big intersections. Mm. There's a huge sign, no right turn during a red. Oh. He completely ignores this, makes a right turn, and a taxi driver who's coming straight in the opposite direction bumps in, oh. slams into the side of his car. Oh, my God. The taxi driver was, the taxi was driven by Mr. T and oh. the whole accident was caught on CCTV. Now the crash sounds dramatic and it, it was, but it wasn't that severe. So neither party were hurt and the cars, the taxi car was more damaged than Lee's car, but it wasn't totaled, right? So they're just really dinged up. Both Lee and Mr. T are caught on camera getting out of their cars very much alive. Okay. They assess the damage on their cars. And again, the taxi driver's car is more damaged than Lee's. And immediately, Lee starts profusely apologizing to the cab driver. Like, please don't call the police because he's probably going to get arrested. This is like his third DUI. God, and damn. he suggests that they settle this privately. Now, sometimes in South Korea, if you don't want to get the police or the insurance companies involved, the party that was at fault for the accident will pay you under the table in a big lump sum of cash. Okay. So you take the cash, you get your car fixed, maybe you go to a chiropractor appointment or two, and hopefully you have enough left over for yourself. It's not uncommon. So Lee is suggesting that they settle it privately, and he's hinting to the cab driver that not only is he going to give him enough cash to fix his car, but he'll throw in some more for emotional damage. Okay. Mr. T's entire career and family depends on this cab. I'm sure there's a part of him that was intrigued by this offer. 
The fact that they would settle it through cash, Mr. T would be able to get his car fixed faster than having to go through the lengthy insurance processes, meaning he was going to be able to get back to work quicker. And maybe, maybe the guy's going to give him a little bit more money. He has a bunch of sons he has to support and his wife at home. So okay. he's like, okay, you know what? I'm not going to call the cops. I'm a reasonable man, right? Okay. I'm not calling the cops. Cool, cool. Lee smiles at him and says, okay, great. Why don't you get in your taxi car and follow me back to my place? It's in Pagul. I don't have cash on me right now. Everything is back home. Mr. T has... This came out in, what, 2000, 2022? They ain't got no type of payment things on the phone. <clears throat> Why you giving me all this cash for? You ain't got no payment plan, no no PayPal, no any of that stuff? Hesitates, because it's pretty late. Yeah, no. Not really comfortable following. Yeah, bitch, I'm not following you no home. Fuck you thought this was, my boy. No, hell no. What the fuck? I mean, you better stay. You better, if I do follow you home, you better come outside with that cash in a bag. Following a stranger back to his house, but Lee keeps assuring him, I'm so sorry, sir. Like, please, truly, I assure you, you're going to be compensated well, generously for your trouble. Mr. D thought the guy looks friendly. He looks genuine enough. And he probably I mean, it's got not my like he's too. a 20 year old girl. He's a 60 year old man. What would this 30 year old dude want to do with him, right? Mm. Okay, fine. He gets in the taxi car, follows Lee all the way to his house. Both of them are seen on CCTV driving towards Lee's apartment and even spotted entering Lee's apartment parking lot. Mm -hmm. There's even CCTV of them making their way through the building garage, down the hallway, and into the building elevator. Korea is filled with CCTVs. Like, if you're going to pick your nose in a hallway, there's probably a CCTV. Uh -huh. So all of this is caught on CCTV. How would he still think he can get away with something <clears throat> like this? Is they don't know each other. Technically, they're strangers. They wouldn't track it down yeah, to him? Yeah, I guess that was his thinking. What? It's a little bizarre. Okay. So there's CCTV of Lee in the elevator with Mr. T on his way up to his apartment, and both of them look very relaxed and casual. It's very scary to think about. Yeah. They walk out of the elevator, and that is the last time Mr. T, the taxi driver, was ever seen alive. Oh, hell Here's no. Here's the chilling part. What? Lee is seen again on that same elevator CCTV camera 20 minutes later. He gets back into the elevator, he's completely alone this time, goes down to the garage. So a couple of things can be gathered from this. Oh shit. One, he killed Mr. T in 20 minutes. Damn. He was able to clean up the blood and hide the body in the closet after killing him in 20 Damn. minutes. Damn! Second, he seemed incredibly calm, relaxed on this- 20, bro, it's already been 20 minutes in this recording right now, how the hell did you- Bro, what? CCTV camera. He doesn't even seem shaken, frazzled. He's not pacing or looking around or like anxiously like fidgeting. He seems so calm. You would never guess that this man just killed someone. Rest in peace to and old third, man, bro. He was now going downstairs to get rid of the remaining evidence. So Mr. T's taxi car that was parked in the apartment building's garage, he just needed to get rid of it. Oh. And side note, I just think it's so scary. So like when you're out in public, there's technically three groups of people, right? In the first group, they look calm because they did nothing wrong. They didn't commit a crime. The second group, those are like the sketchy ones. Those are the ones that we think are the worst criminals. Or like they keep glancing around. They look so suspicious. They probably committed a crime. No. Nah. But the scariest group, the people that look calm, so you suspect they have nothing worried. They, they never committed a crime. They didn't just get done killing someone. But in reality, they, they did. That's the scariest group. Hell we yeah. don't even realize it. We think the second group is the creepiest. We're like, why is that guy just making such weird eye contact? Oof. So the story made sense, and it was corroborated later by CCTV. This is what he's telling the police. Like, I brought him to my apartment, and I killed him. The police oh. are like, okay, we found the CCTV. It makes sense. You killed him in your apartment. Yeah, okay. But That doesn't make... Bro, what the fuck? Like, Cuz is about to get a DUI if he told the police. So you gonna kill the guy... So I guess you don't want the DUI, but you want a murder charge, huh? You want to risk a murder charge. It's crazy. It's very crazy. The motive is still unclear. Why did you kill the nice taxi man? He went out of his way to help you. Hell yeah. He literally could have just called the police. He would have gotten his car fixed through insurance. You would have been at fault. You probably would have been arrested. What? Mm-hmm. Lee said that once they got to his apartment, the taxi man started blackmailing him. Oh. He started demanding a lot more money than what they had initially agreed on and even that. threatened to call the police. What? Lee said that he told Mr. T that he didn't have that kind of money. That was just too much money. Mr. T was allegedly not having it. He kept threatening, I'm going to call the police. Lee said he started panicking. Considering his previous two DUIs and his troubles with the police, he just felt so cornered. What? He said he grabbed a heavy blunt object laying around oh. and started hitting Mr. T on the head until he lay there 
motionless. Lee's like, I did this out of pure rage. It was a crime of passion. This was not premeditated. Init How is that rage? How is that rage? That's not rage. So. That don't make sense. Hey, you said out of rage, but you felt like you were cornered. That's not rage. <laughs> that's, that's, isn't that fear? Actually, the motive, the story, it made sense to the police. How? Not like a moral sense of like, oh yeah, I can see why you did that. But more of like, okay, okay, I, I guess that makes sense. But they would soon realize this guy's a full-blown narcissistic pathological liar. Yeah, and like a potential fuck, serial what? killer. They start doing their investigations, their due diligence, and they realize that that's not what happened at all. Mm. There were so many holes in Lee's story. First of so all, after digging into Lee, they find out that he never keeps cash at home. Like, ever. So the fact that he told Mr. T to come to his apartment to get the cash, that already is a lie. Mm. You don't tell someone to come to your apartment to pick up cash when you know 100% yeah. you don't even have cash at home. Uh, so why would he invite Mr. T over? They don't have ATMs? It's like he was stringing him along knowing damn well that he wasn't going to pay him for the damages. Oh, hell he was no. taking him home to end his life. Oh, fuck. There's not many other plausible theories. Yeah. Lee then killed the 60-year-old, cleaned up the blood, hid his body, and within 20 minutes, he left his apartment to cover up his tracks. He went down to the garage, got rid of Mr. T's car. CCTV cameras caught him driving the cab and disposing of it at a nearby parking lot, like a vacant parking lot. Before he left the car, he deleted the black box in the car, which South Korean law. In every single car, it not only records video and audio in case of car accidents, Ooh. but it's also linked to the car's GPS. So it measures everything. Vehicle oh. speed, location, distance traveled. It basically tracks everything. Lee manually deleted all the data on the black box before leaving the car. Uh. I didn't know you could delete those. Yeah. Huh. Hmm. Wow. Okay. But I, I guess if you delete it, you're suspicious, you know? Yeah. And since everybody has a black box, if you get into a car accident, just because you delete yours doesn't mean that you're not at fault, mm. right? Ah, okay. makes but sense. But yeah, he deleted it. And he also took Mr. T's phone with him. He what? used Mr. T's phone and unlocked it with Mr. T's face after he was dead, which is very chilling. Then using Mr. T's face for the face ID, Lee changed the security lock code, the password of the phone. And the phone served a few purposes. The main one being in South Korea, fintech, like finance technology, is scary efficient, maybe too efficient for its own good. You can basically take out loans using just your phone without ever having to even step foot inside a bank to confirm your identity. So with Mr. T's phone, his ID, and his credit card, Lee was able to pull about 50000 U.S. dollars in the form of a loan. Damn. That was the main purpose. The second purpose was so that Lee could pretend that Mr. T was still alive. He would use Mr. T's phone to send messages to Mr. T's family, oh. his wife and his sons. The police said that they were really heartbreaking messages. Mr. T's son constantly was trying to reach out, worried for his father. He just kept asking, when are you coming home? Is everything okay? Like, I'll come. Thank God that that this nigga Lee is too dumb to not see how his dad, how the dad texts. So he cannot be suspicious. Thank the Lord. <laughs> you, you like if you did something wrong, it's okay. Like we can help you. What's wrong? Lee would respond to him just really weird out of character responses such as I don't have battery I can't respond right now I'm not coming home I think after a few of these messages the family realized that there was no way that this was Mr. T responding to them something was off so finally after five long days Mr. T's family reported him missing to the police the son told the officers please my father hasn't been home for days and I just texted him but I know I know that's not him texting me back I know it's not him during the five days that Mr. T was murdered and shoved into the closet, Lee was busy, not only responding to Mr. T's family as Mr. T, impersonating him to try and convince them to not worry about his absence, but he was also busy spending the money that he got out in Mr. T's name. Oh, God. He took Tara out to dine at the most expensive restaurants. He did a staycation at a five-star hotel with Tara. They even bought $5,000 couple rings. So Tara's thinking to herself, I found myself one of the good ones. Damn. She was over the moon thinking her boyfriend was this kind and caring person. He's a scammer I mean, she had no clue and a where murderer. This money was coming from or how sinister the reality of the situation was. Lady, how did you not ask where you get all this money from? Oh, she probably did. Never mind. Never mind. Needless to say, the police did not think that these actions were of somebody who just killed in the spur of the moment. Uh -huh. This feels like a killer who knows what they're doing. Yeah. They lured a victim to a private space 
killed them quickly and efficiently and then had a protocol in place on what to do afterwards yeah. for how to erase their tracks, how to get as much money as possible from that victim. The very next day, authorities started their process of just turning over every stone, really. They wanted to know everything and anything about Yi gi And they uncovered another creepy piece of the puzzle. What? The house, the apartment that Mr. T's body was found, the one that Yi gi was living in, it wasn't even owned by him. He wasn't even renting it either. What? The contracts for this place were all signed by a woman. Her name has also been redacted for privacy reasons, but a lot of sources refer to her as Miss J. Can you guess where this is going? Another victim? Miss J, a 50-year-old woman, has signed for the apartment. And the alarming part is the police say that she hasn't been physically seen alive in months. She had kept posting on her socials, but her friends and family, they've all been worried about her. What? They had no idea what was going on with her. She was acting strange, refusing to talk to them, see them in person. What? How the fuck? What? The whole thing is starting to feel eerie. They bring Yi Gyeong back into the interrogation room, and they're very blunt with him. The apartment you're living in, it's not yours. It's registered under somebody else's name, so what happened to her? Lee didn't even seem remotely stressed. He's like, oh, okay, you want to talk about Miss J? Oh, yeah, she's my ex-girlfriend. We live together in that apartment. You're okay. lying. Where is she now? You're lying. She's been missing and hasn't been seen in months. You're fucking lying. Where is she? Oh, yeah, I killed her. The police said that he was emotionless. This is his ex-girlfriend. He's emotionless. And Lee went on to tell them how back in August of 2022... So Mr. T was found December of 2022, August of 2022, him and Miss J, which side note, he's 31 and she's 50, 20 year age gap, which is fine. They're both adults, but it seems more like a sugar mama, sugar baby relationship more than anything. Mm -hmm. Neighbors do report hearing them calling each other honey and baby and all mm. these other enduring terms. But Lee said that they had been dating for about four months okay, never mind. when he murdered her yet again out of rage. He keeps trying. Oh, my God, bro. I feel bad for Tara. I'm so happy Tara was able to tell on this man. Tara, you are you are protected by the heavens. Oh, my goodness. Four months. I, I mm. trying to say that all of these are crimes of passion. Like, I don't know if this guy is trying to chalk up being a serial killer to just being passionate, but probably it's getting for out of charges hand. or something. Lee was asked, OK, well, where's her body now? He responded that he had thrown her into the river inside of a duffel bag. Oh. When the neighbors were asked about Lee, side note, um, they all expressed shock. They were like, oh, well, when he moved in with Miss J, he was really nice. Like, we had no idea we were living next to a potential serial killer. Oh my God. They said he was polite, always bowed to the elderly. Like, very, um, his inta was very good. Uh, he seemed very friendly, very smiley guy. The only horrible thing about him that they could all confirm was that, and it's hardly connected to being a serial killer, was that he smoked. He smoked indoors a lot. Oh. They complained, God, did he smoke? He would smoke cigarettes in, literally, in Miss J's bathroom and all all the bathroom vents in the apartment are connected. So it would just travel floor to floor of the bathrooms. They're so bad. If you were even on the same floor as Miss J's unit, you would smell the smoke from the hallway. Ugh. But recently, we thought it was Christmas spirit. Started smelling like roses. But, you know, not like the flowers, but the hmm. very artificial, chemically strong, like an air freshener that was rose scented. We thought maybe it was a New Year's resolution that he was going to stop smoking. We thought maybe Christmas spirit, he's going to have people over. Uh -huh. This started and after the kill murder it. of Mr. T. Yeah. Kill now it. they know in hindsight that it was he was using the artificial rose smell to cover up the smell of the rotting corpse in his closet. Uh. The police wasted no time. They immediately deployed countless search troops to try and find Miss J's body in the river. They deployed helicopters, divers. They tried to cover as much of the river as they possibly could. But this is December of 2022. Well, now, a lot more note, the river that, that he named Never where mind. he allegedly dumped Miss J's body is not the Han River, which it runs directly in the middle of Seoul. This was called... Um, Kongnunchan River, something Kong like that. Chan. It's in Paju. It's Paju. near the North Korean border. Oh, this fuck. is important later. Oh my oh, gosh. Oh yes. nah. So it's freezing. They got a bunch of troops near the border. The oh, temperatures are below freezing. A lot of parts of the river were frozen shut. But adding to the difficulty of this search was that um there's active landmines because it's the border. I, I don't know. I, I they can't confirm, but there is the danger of active landmines. Okay, but he went over there. 
Regardless. That's what he claimed. For what? I don't oh. think he went and over And so the there. police are searching over there, but the search is not <clears throat> going well because of all these things. The temperature, the frozen river, the having to deploy helicopters, divers, and the... F yeah, if, 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 the, if the trained professionals can't get over there, how the hell did he get over there? That don't make no damn sense, bro. The fact that it's on the border, meaning that they have to be careful of active landmines, it's like a behemoth of a search. They're not going well. Meanwhile, news breaks of a potential serial killer in holding, and the public is freaking out rightfully. One of the main points of contention in this case, at least with netizens, is the fact that in 2019, South Korea passed an Authoritative Interpretations Act. What does that mean? What? Okay. In order for the government to release a suspect's photo to the public, mm -hmm. the police has to get permission from the suspect. That hey, is so bizarre. Huh? How did that even come about? What? I guess it's the whole innocent till proven guilty type oh. of mindset. But hear me out, right? This guy confessed. He confessed to two murders. Okay, so it, maybe in other cases, Koreans were a little bit more like, mm, still feel a little weird about it. <laughs> it seems like most Koreans don't like this law. Uh. So with the current law, the suspect cannot be forced to release their names, release their mugshot or any pictures of them unless they are officially go to trial and sentenced. Uh -huh. And even then, there are other protection acts in place. It, it just depends case by case. But they don't even have to show their face when talking to the press or maybe making public appearances that are required during this case. Mm -hmm. So basically, a potential serial killer could just refuse to not let his photograph be released and choose to stay anonymous. Mm. Since 2019, since this act passed, which I know it feels like last year, but it's been multiple years since then, uh -uh. only one criminal has agreed. One suspect has released to release his pictures. Hey, Not yo. only that. You know, this is a sidebar. They released Trump's picture, his mugshot. I didn't think they were going to do that. Carry on. You get to pick which picture gets released. Like, you know how huh? you get arrested, your mugshot is everywhere? Bro, what? Mm -hmm. You get to pick your picture, and everyone chooses, like, the cutest little picture. What the hell? So the odds aren't looking great with Lee releasing his, you know, identity. Mm -hmm. Of course he refused. Now, I do think the press and public would have been less angered by Lee's decision and this law if he hadn't outright confessed to killing two people. If he was like, I didn't do it. You have the wrong people. You have the wrong person. Like, it wasn't me. Then maybe the netizens would have been like, okay, let's just wait till trial. Huh. Because he's saying it's not him. And he, uh -huh. like, brings up a good few points. Maybe this is, like, police coercion. Uh -huh. But he straight up was like, it's me. So now you confess to killing two people, but you want the public to respect your privacy. Did you respect the public when you committed those murders? Like, did you ask for permission? Exactly. He said that he was refusing to release his identity because he didn't want his family to be disappointed or to know about his crimes, oh, that's so which cute. is a bizarre reasoning. That's like, so you cute, care huh? about what your family thinks? And fine, you can hide from the general public, but how do you hide these crimes from your own family? Like, you're in prison. <laughs> Netizens were furious. There was a lot of conversation on this act that was passed on this act itself. And should these suspects really be given that much privacy? Really? Like, is it necessary? Really. There's a debate over so. what should and should not be released to the media. But there was still a chance that the public could see his face. And all of those times are during police escorted press conferences. So technically, there's loopholes in this law. He could be like, no, I don't want to release my identity. But when he's being transferred from police custody to the courthouse, if he's not good at covering up his face and the, the mm. press get a shot, they can post it because mm. you're in public space, dude. Mm. There's a public area. Mm, that's why they always have a bag over the head and they, all that. Uh, they always have a giant parka. The hood is over their face. They've got giant face masks. Face masks. Mm. And that's exactly how sh he shows up to the next court hearing. Uh. And you can see him in the pictures when he's being escorted to court, completely covered up. Mm. A lot of netizens were angered because, again, it's like, hey, you admitted to killing an elderly man and now you want us to respect your privacy? I don't really think so. Mm. The only thing that he said during this interaction with the press was, he said, I'm sorry for the murders I committed. Netizens kept screaming at the cops, like, take off his hood. <laughs> and the officer said, we talked to him about taking off his mask, but he refused. We have to respect his decision. Mm -hmm. Man. People were like, why are we giving these people choices? Don't give them a choice to reveal their identity or not if you confess to murdering two people. This is part of public safety. Does the government care true, about public actually. safety or privacy rights of killers? Mm. Now, there's more on this debate later because clearly we have a I, I kind of think, like, it's one of those situations where it's like, if you let one slide, you got to let everybody slide or something like that. You know what I'm saying? I, it could be something like that. I don't know. ton of pictures of this guy. Oh, okay. But we'll get to it later. All right. 
Thumbnails. Yugi Young was officially indicted on charges of homicide by robbery, revenge killing, abandoning dead bodies, falsifying documents, fraud, Ooh. and violations of information communication networks, and credit card laws. Mm. He could be facing life in prison or even the death penalty. Now, although mm. the charges were made public, he still was not even named in the media. Uh -huh. And a photo of him wasn't released at this point. At the same time, searches for Miss J's body are still going strong. Side note about this whole debate. People were saying the police kept coming out and begging the public to give up any information they have on this case. And the public is like, how do you want us to do that when we don't know what this guy looks like? Do you yeah. want us to just take a guess? <laughs> you know, when I did see a suspicious guy at the convenience store, maybe it's this guy. Like, what, what, do, you, what do you mean? Yeah. So that was another thing netizens were like, what are you saying right now? <laughs> Anyway, they're looking for Miss J. Anyway. Nothing is coming up. Not a single thing had been found, not even a single clue. They were wasting precious time, resources, trying to figure out where Miss J's body was. And maybe Miss J wasn't even in the river. When they confronted Lee again, he casually just said, actually, you know what? I didn't throw her in the river. Now that I think about it, I remember digging a shallow grave. I told you he bit, fucking I lied. I told you he lied. He's a fucking liar, bro. Nigga, stand in your murder, bro. Stand in your killings, you hoe ass nigga. What the fuck wrong with you? Stand in your shit. What? Next to the river. Next to the Wow, come on. The investigators are agitated. I mean, he's suddenly changing his story. They don't You gotta shoot that nigga in his kneecaps just for that. Like, what the fuck? You're lying to police now, buddy. <laughs> You're lying to police. Get yourself a leg shot. I don't even know if they should trust this version of events. But you got to. Lee went on to describe exactly where he buried Miss J's body. Mm -hmm. And he sat back in the chair and he like cocked his head and he said, this is my last gift to you guys. This guy is clearly enjoying the feeling of power of toying with the police. He felt like he was the only one that had answers to questions that they needed to know. Also, it, it, I don't I don't know if it's like a, a big a big, um, you know, like a like a like a big. Ooh, I'm so clever when you're like toying with police because we have these all these like publications and these movies showing that police are kind of incompetent. This is a very false sense of uh, self-cleverness, I guess. I don't know. <laughs> this is often why narcissistic killers will taunt the police even after being caught. They send them on these wild goose chases. Sometimes it's just to prolong the experience of the police needing them of being the guy with the answers. He got off on the attention, the power he felt with the only one with this type of information. This guy's a weirdo. And he's now acting like he's the good guy. He's throwing them a bone, helping them out. He felt like he was smarter than the police. Also, when killers do this, a lot of experts believe it's to feel like they're in control. Because ultimately, when they're caught, you're no longer in control. You don't even have the freedom to control when you take a shower or when you eat or when you poo. So him toying with the police makes it seem like he's in control of this operation. He's the head boss. This is exactly what he wanted. Mm. He's like, I can make these guys do things. Search places that are going to come up empty. They're going to get frustrated and I get this emotional reaction out of them. And it's shitty because what are the police going to do? Just not listen? They have to search the area. Yeah. So they go. They look for this shallow grave where Miss J was allegedly buried. And they send out troops, canine units. They spend all day and just they, they searched the full radius of where Lee claimed she was buried. And they found absolutely nothing What's yet again. They're oh getting fed up with this guy. <laughs> they drag Lee out to the river and they have him find the burial site himself. They're like, point it out. <laughs> While there, Lee's walking around, and there's there's pictures of this. He's handcuffed. There's a whole team of police officers, laughing? like a dozen, a whole police force. What's up with this nigga? Yeah. But anyway, he starts walking around confidently. He points at a spot on the ground. He's like, that's where I buried her. There was nothing found at that site. Nothing. So did he forget where he buried her, or is he oh, just he messing did. with the police and having fun? It's speculated that he probably did something to Miss J's body that wouldn't match up with him killing her in a bout of rage mm -hmm. maybe he had done something worse with the disposal of her body um, sometimes when killers will dismember someone or do something very gruesome they'll try to cover it up or maybe he had done something to her before she was killed or right after she was killed that would clearly indicate that his lies were not the truth mm. so is he just stalling for as long as possible the police were frustrated they throw him in the back of a police car and they continue with their search now it's hours he's inside this police car. He looks around. This is America. They fucking He up. figures, okay, I'm probably alone. I don't see anyone. Oh, God. He's feeling hot and stuffy in the car. He lowers his hood, 
takes off his mask. There were reporters hiding in the distance with super zoom lenses. <laughs> no freaking way. Yes. <laughs> they captured photo after photo of this guy in the police car and his identity was finally revealed. Let's see it. Show okay, it. so they took that photo in the car and then the people were like, I know this guy, here's his photo. Yes. Ooh. That's how they found everything. Yes. And once Wow. Yeah. Ooh. Once this leaked He's into stupid. the media, Lee was like, Oh, I want to release my identity. Again, that whole power, like he wants to feel like he's the one making decisions. Yeah, he knew the game was up. He formally gave permission to reveal his Where's name the to pictures? the public. And again, he's just trying to feel like he's in control. And he chose his ID picture this to be released. I'm sorry. I'm I, my brain just went straight to. Oh my god! I just started hearing bouncy in the back of my head. Oh no! Oh no! What what is wrong with me? Cause released so in the u.s more often than not your mugshot gets plastered right uh, yeah. and your id is also i'm sorry probably just as bad as your mugshot Mingi, i love you okay like my id picture is so disgustingly gross it, it's probably nobody's this is my profile pic is my id picture but in south korea it you can mine. choose to release any picture and people typically choose their driver's license picture because you can edit your driver's license picture what it's south korea law it's legal for you to edit and photoshop your driver's license picture what yeah. It just can't be too drastic where you look like Kim Kardashian when you're not, but to a degree. So he releases that. And if this case wasn't already viral, it would be with the release of his ID. Oof. Because since the day of him being taken into custody, news, media outlets, netizens, social media forums, everyone is calling this guy an utter vile monster, like a disgusting piece of sewage rat. I think everyone had a clear picture of what they thought he was going to look like, like a sewage rat. And then his picture was released. He looks like a K-pop idol. And look, I'm not even gonna, I'm not even gonna go down the rabbit hole of like, I feel like we've traveled down this road one too many times. How could this killer be evil when he's so conventionally attractive? It's usually, bro. It's usually the the good looking people who are kind of like killers. I haven't really seen like a good looking killer, but I'd be thinking people would be ugly just off of like the actions they do. But like some people would be like, oh, he was so he looks so good. How can he be a killer? You know, it's kind of obvious when you think about it. Nobody's going to expect the person that looks beautiful to be a killer. Because they're beautiful. Why would you want to kill people because you're beautiful? Pretty, pr 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 pretty privilege. There's so many crime documentaries where the whole premise is he's a monster, but like, look how cute he is. That's what hyperstophiliacs okay. come from. He's okay looking at best. If you guys are listening to the audio version, I'll describe him as best as I can. I do think that he fits all the conventional attractive standards for Korean beauty. He's tall, incredibly symmetrical facial features, I like that picture though. sharp jawline, a lot of hair, you still like a murderer. thick jet you black hair, and clear skin. So with this picture, everyone collectively loses their minds. Now, I do see where people are coming from. I do think that there's an element of we think that we know what creepy people look like. We mm -hmm. stay away from those people. We stay away from that strange, creepy looking dude acting weird in the dark corner of the parking lot. We stay away from the guy that makes way too much eye contact and licks his lips in the grocery store. We think these people are creepy because we think we can spot out creepy people. You can't though. It's hard to say that Iggy Young is creepy looking. So a lot of people had this collective thought of, Oh my God, if I met this guy, I probably would have lowered my guard because he looks so normal. Mm -hmm. I mean, in fact, I think he looks handsome. I would have trusted him. I'd probably go to his house to get accident money. He looks like a normal person. Now, another thing to note about South Korea is that I'm sure this exists everywhere. But in South Korea, there's even a word for it. It's called insang. Insang. It's a little bit different from first impressions. Insang means just based off of someone's facial features and how they sit on their face and their resting face you can tell what kind of energy they give off what vibe they have and i'm sure there's more to it but sometimes i hear my mom talking about you know this person's insung is this and that's kind of funny because people be saying my insung is like something that it's not like people be thinking i'm intimidating as hell i don't know how i don't think i look intimidating you know what i'm saying do i look intimidating what's my insung Like it don't I don't look I don't think I look intimidating for real. 
If you saw me walking down the street, would you be scared of me? I don't know. Put in the comments down below. <laughs> and all I'm thinking is, wow, insang is just code word for pretty privilege. Yeah. Like all the parts that she's pointing out are like, oh, their insang is good because, you know, their face looks like this. And I'm like, those are just conventionally attractive features, mother. Uh, mother. Mm. So I think his insang looks trustable. Mm. And that's not to say Koreans are naive and just trust anyone that's attractive, but I'm sure everyone everywhere has these biases. It's like a human bias. Yeah, so his big can't avoid it. Yeah. His picture basically light it's the so internet pretty. on fire. So the pretty. internet does the thing of investigating alongside the police. So we're gonna break this down into two parts. Let's the go. police investigation, the net is an investigation. Let's get it. Let's start with the police. Okay. The investigators are under a lot of pressure now to figure out this case. And I will say I'm pretty shocked at how thorough the investigation has been on this one. Oh, they did their job, huh? Why? I mean, they do. I can't even point out where they went wrong. What? Okay. That's so, good, right? Yeah, I mean, it's good, but oh. I'm just shocked. Like, where was this energy for a lot of other cases we talked about? But, like, <laughs> yeah. they're pulling out all the stops on this one. The police start tracking Lee's movements prior to his arrest. They find CCTV of him at a restaurant before his arrest. So this is after T's murder and mm -hmm. the five days before his arrest. The interesting incident stands out to them because so far it seems like Lee was not that close with anybody. He wasn't close with his family. He wasn't even that close with Tara. She barely seemed to know him. Everything he had told her was a lie. Wow. So she didn't even know the real him. Nobody knows the real him, like I'm saying. Damn. So the police are like, look at this guy. Which, side note, remember how um, Lee told everybody, including Tara, that his parents were wealthy? They're not. So again, who is this guy? Police stumble upon CCTV in a Korean barbecue restaurant. And there is Lee sitting with a group of six of his friends. They come in together, sit down, and start sharing a meal. Uh -huh. Friends. Maybe these people know something about him. Uh -huh. CCTV shows them taking soju shots, having fun. It seems like a regular boys' night out. But then it gets weird. Near the end of the meal... The six friends just collectively get up and leave when Lee is preoccupied with something. What? They just ghost him in the middle of the meal. What? They Wait, just what do you up mean? and they... leave. So he goes to the bathroom. Lee goes to the bathroom. And these six friends, they're like, let's go. They get up and leave. Oh, they're not even sick. done eating their meal. Okay. So um, they don't want to pay. It seems like it, right? Oh. And Lee is forced to cover the entire dinner tab. He goes Damn. inside, pays for the meal because they were outside dining. Then he goes back outside and for a few minutes, he eats a little bit more alone. And then he leaves. The police find another CCTV camera that shows the street view. And it shows that Lee walks away and the six guys are standing at the end of the block, just talking on the sidewalk. What? Lee calmly approaches his friends and he starts freaking out on them. I mean, I guess this part is understandable. Yeah. He's seen on CCTV getting in their face. The friends slam him to the ground to get him to back off. And when he's down, the friends start quickly running off. Then Lee gets back up, wildly motioning his arms like he's shouting something at the guys. They're long gone. They're already down the road. Mm -hmm. huh. The police want to know. Maybe he told his friend something that night. Maybe he got drunk and confessed to the murder of Mr. T. Or maybe more. Ooh. Or maybe he did something that they didn't like. Why would they all just leave him at a restaurant? Mm. What happened? What happened? Police track down these friends, and even if nothing spectacular happened at the Korean barbecue restaurant, maybe they had insight on Lee as a person in general. Uh huh. Police bring them in, and this case takes such a bizarre turn. Wait, what? The guys are like, yeah, no, we're not friends. We actually don't know him. That was the first time we ever met the guy. What? What the Literally fuck is what? going so on? So the guys tell the police, we were out having drinks at a nearby restaurant, like the six of us. We're actually friends. Like, we've known each other for a while. And this dude, Lee, just approaches our table, this guy, and asks if we wanted to join him to get Korean barbecue a few doors down. It was really weird. He just walked past us and was like, hey, do you, I'll pay for a meal. You guys want to get Korean barbecue? It was really weird. But that he said something really, along the lines of well, like, really look, I'm super fucking rich, okay? Oh, like, I have mind. so much money, I don't even know what to Oh, uh, never mind. I was about to say, bro, they don't really seem too crazy. Like, you just like, you just like, hey, yo, what's up? Y'all want to get a meal or something? Da-da-da, boom, you got friends for life or some shit like that. And now you're about, I'm super rich. I'm like, all right, get the fuck out of here, asshole. To do with it. And I'm kind of bored, so you guys want to be my drinking buddies? Now, the six friends, they're in their early 20s. Lee is 30. I mean, a free meal is a free meal. And it's not like Lee is 60 years old, this creepy adjusty. Maybe they could all be friends. Like an unlikely start. But who knows? Maybe they'd get along. And it's mm -hmm. also Christmas time. So everybody's in this like jolly like, yeah, let's all just huddle together. And this spirit. guy's just murderous. They agree. Pay for their drinks. They all walk to the Korean barbecue restaurant. They order meat, which, side note, 
Meat in Korea is super, super expensive. Oh, Seafood is cheaper in Korea. Korean barbecue is like a big thing in Korea because it's also a very pricey meal typically. Mm. So, I mean, they're excited. This is like someone being like, in America, let me take you out to a lobster feast. Oh, mm. shit. That just doesn't happen. Yeah. It's, this is really expensive. They order soju shots, and it seems pretty clear to the police, but also to the group of guys, that Lee just wanted to invite them to dinner so that he could be a raging narcissist. Uh. The six guys are like, the whole time, he was just bragging about how rich he was. How he was so rich, he doesn't even know what to do with his bajillions of dollars. Bajillion. And he just threw it around, like literally with light money on fire type of energy. He buys strangers meals, which, you know, all of this was fine. He could be talking about how he was God's gift to earth. And we would have listened like it was all legit because we're getting free kulgi, right? Mm -hmm. But we left in the middle of the meal because something weird happened. I don't know how it came up, but he just kept asking us like how far we would go for money. We were all just giggling, but he seemed so serious. Bro, I think he want to fuck me. <laughs> oh, my God. I'd leave, too. What do you mean how far I would go? I would entertain it for a second until he brings up, like, some certain keywords that'd be like, yeah, nah, you got it, my brother. You got it. You got it, sir. Thank you for the meal. I'm going home. Happy holidays. We laughed it off, and we we're like, eh, I'd probably do this. I'd probably, you know do this and he asked us dick? genuinely if i paid you a million dollars would you kill someone would you kill someone for money no nah, i don't think i could do that <laughs> probably not and they tried to talk about something else but he kept bringing it back to murder murder and money and he looked dead serious um the friends are getting freaked out i think it's like it's hitting them we don't even know this guy he could be poisoning our drinks right now as we speak. Like, we literally don't know this man. Oh, jeez. They get freaked out and they decide to leave the restaurant while Lee is in the restroom. But instead of leaving the area, they linger around talking about, that was weird. That was so bizarre. Probably joking about it when Lee suddenly approaches them on the street. And hey, just so y'all know, I don't know if y'all know this, but like, here's a survival tip about going out with people. Um, if you get ice in your drink and it doesn't float, there's something in your drink. Y'all can fact check me on that if that's not true, but y'all be careful out there. There's some weird people out there. And the friend said, it's like he was a completely different person. He was so angry, aggressive, like there was no way to even talk sense into him like, hey, we left because you were being so creepy. He wanted to fight. He got all up in our friend's face. We pushed him off and he fell to the ground and we're like, we don't even think when he gets up, it's going to be okay. Like, we're going to get into a fight. So they take off. Lee is caught on CCTV, waving his hands around, yelling something. The friends would later tell the police he was screaming, I'm going to kill you. I'm going to kill you. Oh, no. Okay, so he, there's definitely a dark, dark side of him that oh, can God. come out. Oof. Very bizarre. Get the and it definitely adds him. to the bigger picture of who this guy is. But that still doesn't solve the question of where is Miss J? Oh, fuck. The police keep digging and they find just as Lee had done with Mr. T, he was using Miss J's phone to periodically post on Kakao Talk. Bro, was it for cat food? To make it seem like she was alive. If her friends and family reached out worried because nobody had seen her in a while, she would just. Bro, was Miss J used for cat food? I hope not. Respond that she wasn't feeling great and she just wanted time alone. He sprinkled all these breadcrumbs using Miss J's phone to make it seem like she was just going under the radar voluntarily. Now, similar to Mr. T, the police uncovered Lee had taken out loans in Miss J's name after he killed her, mm. about 15,000 US dollars. But he didn't kill Miss J for 15,000 US dollars. The police believe in the short four months that he was dating Miss J, he manipulated her into loaning him 200,000 US dollars. There is even. Wow. A written agreement that he would pay her back. So Miss J is making sure to cover herself, protect herself. But ultimately, Lee was not able to pay back. Mm -hmm. The guy refused to even get a job. What? The whole time he's dating Miss J, she's bankrolling their entire relationship, taking him on lavish trips, buying him designer goods, letting him live in her home. So the erasure of his debt, the $15,000 loan, and the fact that he could live in her apartment rent-free, I think all of those combined led him to murdering his girlfriend at Damn, the time. Damn, bro, what the fuck? Maybe that was his plan all along. 
This case then started being compared to another real life parasite case. What? You know the South Korean movie where there's a rich family. I'm gonna watch it after this. Actually. They employ a lower socioeconomic class family, I guess, and they just suck them dry slowly but surely. And then you find out that there's another family living underneath the rich family's home, leeching off of them as well. And it's a question of who is the parasite in society? Mm. And it's a movie about social class. I would say maybe that's too high of praise for what Lee was doing. I think Lee was just a straight up parasite, Ugh. like not in the movie sense, but just in the normal sense of the word. He mm-hmm. just wanted money. He would latch onto someone, suck them dry of their funds over the course of a few months mm. and then kill them and then take out one final loan. Jesus. So originally everyone was calling him the K-pop killer, but soon the news outlets referred to him as the real life parasite killer. Oh, jeez. And I, I do think it's, Kind of this question of if he's capable of doing this to Miss J and going months and months without getting caught, that really doesn't seem like it was his first kill. Even the way that he killed Mr. T, the 20 minutes in and out covering his tracks, that doesn't seem like it was just his second time. It feels like this guy has done this multiple times before. He's experienced. He has a system in place. Lee claims that he had no other victims, but the police don't believe him. The police found DNA in the apartment, four other traces of DNA, three female and one male. Now, these are being tested, but it is speculated that they're probably not going to reveal any new victims. It's speculated that it belonged to Miss J, Tara, the cleaning lady, and the male DNA belonged to Mr. T. Side note about the cleaning lady. Lee called a cleaning lady 12 times a month to the apartment to clean. One of the times she came to clean was after December 20th. So there was a dead body locked in the closet at this point. She was later interviewed by police and said... Lee was always really nice and friendly. I didn't suspect a thing. I always thought he was just another regular law-abiding citizen. And just the sheer number of people that have come into contact with Lee that could potentially be another victim, insane. So take a guess. How many people do you think you talked to in the past year? Like I'm talking friends, acquaintances. I'm not talking like, oh, you texted your Uber driver like you're here. Mm. Talking like full-on conversations, text, phone, I don't know. Nothing. A lot. Not that many. A good amount. Is it? I don't know. I'd probably think like 15, 20, yeah, 30. 30. I don't yeah. know. Why? Okay, maybe like 40. <laughs> if you're working and stuff. All right. Probably not a lot, right? But in 2022 alone, Lee spoke to at least 380 people. Again, not just brief contact of like, oh, you can leave it at the front door. Or like, Uber driver, I'm here. Are you socializing out there? Socializing. Hmm. Friendly conversations. Mostly women. But 380 different people. That's a huge number. That means he's talking to at least one new person every day. That's a lot of different potential victims. He could have invited one over, killed them, and taken loans out in their names. Maybe they've been reported missing, but the cases haven't been connected yet. So the police are now having to go through the incredibly tedious route of making sure each one of these 380 people are still alive. So tedious, not because lives are tedious, but the administrative work on that, it's not just calling up 380 people and making sure they're alive, but just the paperwork, the reports Uh. that have to be filed with each verification of life. It's going to be a mountain. They did reveal something interesting about the conversations, though. It seemed like Lee had 380 different identities. Oh, Every single conversation was a whole new lie, a whole new world he made up. How do you remember all that shit? And the conversations were just about him, 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 him seeking validation, him lying about his life. He literally talked to 380 people. And for each one, he just wanted to brag about this fake life he had. Uh, He had 380 separate storylines. What the hell? And he liked it. I mean, he spent so much time on this. It's just so strange. Could have been a writer. It's not even him that's being praised and loved by these strangers. He just got off on it. He got. It's crazy how you can literally just. Do something else. You could you could do something else. You could you could do something else. The ego boost from them being impressed by his fake life. He also used these lies to seduce women. Mm. Investigators said that he had various different girlfriends, which they were following up on to make sure they were still alive. But in the time that he could have spent working a full time job, he was busy talking to girls. He was almost never single. He very quickly moved them into his apartment, Miss J's apartment. So remember how Tara had just moved in with him? Mm-hmm. Almost immediately before her, there was another girlfriend that had moved in. But she moved out because they had broken up. Uh. He had lived with three different women in the span of five months. Sometimes they only lived together for a week before breaking up. And I would be curious to know what these ex-girlfriends say about him. Because if you move in with a boyfriend and you move out in a week, I feel like something happened. Yeah, Mm -hmm. That's not really a cordial breakup. Yeah. 
And speaking of people who might have interesting things to say about him, Lee had a home inspector come to the apartment recently. He was tracked down and interviewed by the police. I'm not sure how much hindsight plays a role in this, but I'm sure it does to a degree. But the guy was positively, absolutely freaked out by Lee. He said, During the time I was there to inspect his house, he just kept telling me how his parents died and he inherited a ton of money. I felt weird about it because it's a very personal story and we just met. We're not even friends. But more than that, he was smiling as he told me the story. Um, Like, it's eerie to be smiling while talking about the tragic death of your parents, no? Yeah. The police investigators also uncovered that the guy had married twice before and apparently had a previous child from a previous marriage, which then turned out to be a lie. The police were sent on another wild goose chase because Lee had told a bunch of people that he had a kid. And so the police were like, we got to track down this kid and make sure that this kid is alive. There's no child. Turns out Lee never had a kid. He just made up this lie. He would take pictures with a friend's kid and act like it was his. Was he married? He was married twice before. And this is kind of where the police investigation and the netizen investigation, they merge. These marriages are important and they could lead to an answer if he's a serial killer or not, which is kind of bizarre. But just hear me out. Everywhere in the world, I'm sure it's like this. And serial killer is three victims. Yeah. So he's one victim. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Hmm. And um, everywhere else in the world, weddings are expensive, right? And especially in Korea, very expensive. More often than not, the groom's side covers the cost of the weddings. So the fact that he had two weddings, the investigators were puzzled at how he could even afford these weddings. His parents weren't rich, like he claimed. He was receiving no financial help from them. He had no job. How the hell is he paying for these weddings? Netizens were able to find pictures from his 2018 wedding as well. These pictures are being debated whether or not they should even be circulating since he did not give permission for them to be released. Yeah, but I guess he didn't ask permission before he committed murder, so I'm going to put them in the video version of this podcast because who cares? Yeah. Back to the wedding photos. It's quite a wedding. There's a huge cake. It's filled with floral arrangements, and the venue looks really nice. It feels very expensive. So yes... Every single sign is pointing to the fact that this killer probably has more victims because, again, how did he pay for this wedding? Mm. And two of them. Yeah, that makes sense, right? Yeah. Yeah. Another reason that the police believe that he has more victims is they found a myriad of items in the apartment that did not belong to Miss J or Lee or any of his previously known girlfriends that are alive. So either this guy is a pickpocketer or a thief, along with being a killer, or... These are sick trophies that he might have accumulated over the years. Mm. The police were inclined to believe the latter because they've been going the extra mile to locate the owners of every single item they found, including a pair of shoes in the beginning. Remember? Mm -hmm. The police had to call and locate all the owners of these random items to make sure that they were still alive. In addition to the 380 people that they need to confirm are alive after being in contact with Lee in 2022. We still don't have updates. It's going to be a huge, complicated process. I mean, just think about the sheer manpower needed to execute an operation of this caliber. Like, that's crazy. A forensic pathologist close to the case said, it's clear that he's a cold-blooded killer. I think they need to look into the well-being of every single person that may have come in contact with him. He seems to have a record of stealing someone's identity, killing them, leaving them, living with their assets, and then taking out loans in their names. No one should trust a single thing that comes out of this guy's mouth. Yeah, what the hell? Psychologists who personally evaluated Lee in prison said that he shows very strong signs of having Ripley syndrome. Ripley syndrome is antisocial personality disorder or a variation of it, it seems, where someone is a pathological liar and fully believes the lies that they tell. Mm. This doesn't mean that they're actively in psychosis and can't be held accountable for their crimes. It just means that they're kind of living in a different reality. I guess the difference between someone with this syndrome versus just other pathological liars is the fact that these people tend to not be able to differentiate between their lies and reality and it typically originates from them not being able to come to terms with their actual reality Uh so lee believes himself to be this wealthy heir and the reality of him not being that is really hard for him to even face so he might genuinely believe his own lies It said that other signs of Ripley syndrome are repeated deception or lies, general disregard for rules and the law, and the tendency to commit criminal acts. So scary. Yeah. They're also known to be a lot more arrogant, um, often lack respect for rules and systems, and have a strong superiority complex. They're very hot-headed, temperamental. So This sounds exactly like him. Yeah, literally. Mm -hmm. Yeah. But also, like, the 380 identities. 
how many realities realities is he living in that's crazy and i wonder if that's because that's f- what his brain wants wants to believe the world that he's in it drives him to do these murder just to make that into a reality yeah damn and maybe that's why he can d- not disassociate this but like a weird compartmentalize these murders so well like the <laughs> fact that he got into that elevator not shaken at all this nigga yeah. weird, yo. It's so creepy. This nigga's a weirdo. Authorities stated that they will be administering a psychopath test on Lee to see whether he, where he lies on the scale. Some shit. sources say that Lee even searched up toxic substances and poisoning before murdering Miss J. So I think that should be something to look out for as the case continues to develop because it's still unfolding. We just have to keep an eye out for what's next. Mm. But this case does come full circle for a moment. What? Cats. Okay, there are a lot of victims to Lee's crimes, and his pets are victims as well. What? He had three cats and a dog. They were all taken in by the police and placed immediately on the euthanasia list. And if that Mm -hmm. wasn't bad enough, I highly doubt that these pets lived good lives where they were well taken care of. There's videos circulating once Lee's identity was released of him putting his cat into a pool. Miss J seems to be there and Lee is laughing while he puts his terrified cat into the pool. The cat is squirming and literally dunked in the water and Lee pulls the cat back up and he looks overjoyed. It's just weird because there's not a pool in his backyard or a lake nearby his home. So it's not like he's trying to teach his cat to swim. There really seems to be no reason for this other than pure entertainment. The fuck? Thankfully, the Korean Animal Rescue Management Association hears of this case and the pets are being put on the kill list. They step in, protect them from being put to sleep. A representative said the number of cases of endangered animals left at crime scenes is on the rise. It's a sad reality that animals cannot directly explain the abuse that they've experienced and are often ignored without legal protection. Mm. They're just left as abused animals that were discovered at a crime scene. That's all. There's pictures of his pets being transported out of the crime scene. They look really scared and confused and neglected. The only silver lining to this case is the animals, all four of them, have been adopted. Hey. And they're going to end up with loving families that will protect them from harm. Hey, okay, but, God damn. I mean, I just can't imagine how he treated them. Oh, and God. that is what we know about this case so far. Let me know your thoughts in the comments and if you guys want updates on this as it progresses. But please stay safe. Nah, for real. And I'll see you guys on Wednesday for the main episode. Nah, <coughs> nah this guy's a weirdo. This guy is a weirdo. I don't, I chose this this story instead of doing the one about Kim Jong Un's brother. And I'm left with the uh, This guy's a weirdo, son. What the hell? The K-pop killer. I ain't like that. I ain't like that one. I ain't like that. No, nah, I ain't I ain't like that, bro. I ain't like that at all. That nigga's a weirdo. What the fuck? God damn. I ain't like that one bit, but it's 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 still shout out to uh, Stephanie though. But God damn, that, oh God, what do y'all think? Jesus Christ, mm, I don't. Ugh. Rest in peace to those victims, and I feel sorry for those cats. What is wrong with this, this nigga? A weirdo, son. <laughs>